All right, then let's go to the let's go to, to the dock. All right, so welcome to the first homework review session of the 365 semester. We will be going over assignment one on CSC365.io and we'll be going through each of the questions and hopefully reviewing, hopefully helping some of you out. So the first, one of the first things, actually one of the first things you need to be doing is logging on to Piazza or getting your, your accounts registered on Piazza. But that is so, there's not too many points to be gained there. So we're just gonna go straight on to Bandit. For bit, to begin with Bandit, you need to you need to realize that you need to SSH with your with a username, a password, a port number, and then the host. And you have to combine this into a format that will allow you access onto the Bandit servers. And from there, you would be gaining access to files or getting it getting the files and then getting the passwords to go on to the next levels at the, there on after. And uh, we can actually, oh wow, it didn't apply, hold on. Apply, okay, now should it work? Does it work? Yes, it does. And uh, something like that would, let's see, can I write on, yes, okay. So first off, you would need to start off with something, to a beginning command of SSH. And there's a few options on how you can use the username to begin. How I usually do it is I'll do something like bandit zero, at in the beginning and then I'll apply the the host here for the host part and then for the port, you have to add a port number after that. So for SSH, you would actually use a option command called dash P, which get, lets you specify a port number that you can use and you would use 220. And then on after you would apply the password once you log SSH onto the server. All right. Then make files. I've seen a lot. We've seen a lot of questions about make files this semester. Then, and uh, we feel we probably should go over it a little bit more. So, for make files, we the purpose is to remake the source code into executables, and those executables can be binary or non-binary fi files. The purpose of the make file is to only remake the file or re remake the executable into into the executable when the source code actually changes. So if you so that means if you call on the make file and the source code doesn't change, then the make file stops and doesn't remake the executable. For C++, it's a it's a compiled language, so you actually have to output it as a binary file. So you would need to somehow take the C dot just CPP, I guess, and then convert it into just I guess C dot bin for binary. And you could there's a few ways you can or there's one notable way you can do it. Um, with just GCC dash O, uh, let's say C dot bin, 
because the dash o will first take it would, it would output into a file called cbin, and then you would use the file c dot cpp as your as your uh, as your source files. So you would somehow need to take the this command. Okay, I can't erase that. You just somehow take this command and turn it into a make file so that it would, so that when it's run, it, it does this command to, to re remake the executable, which is actually cbin. For Python, it's a little different. Python, Python and Java, for instance, are, they're not straight compiled languages. They're more known to be interpreted language. That, mean, that means the, the words will be like parsed into bytecode later. And then, and then it's run through it, the interpreter or like the JVM in order to, to actually compute. For Python, for which what this means is that all we really need to worry about is getting the, getting the file to be interpreted by its own interpreter. So for Python, for instance, you would need the Python, the Python interpreter And then it would go and compile like a uh, like a print line. And this means that we can essentially make th make this form into an executable. Which so you would take this and then then do do a Python dot pot or Actually, it's not pi, but so really that the the difference between the executable and the source code isn't that much different, meaning that you can almost take the Python program and turn it into a Python executable with not too many steps. So there's, you don't need to do, you don't need to do the out file, which turns it into a binary file. You just really need to somehow make the executable realize that it's a Python file and that you can do that through like a shebang line or actually no, mostly it, most notably it's a shebang line. All right, now part four, commands. So note, this one is probably the, I would say the hardest part is, or the main goal of this assignment is to be able to use the arguments on the command line. So in the example it uses command, foo bar and then it spits out the the length or the, how many arguments there is so like arc c for instance will give you how many and then you would have to reverse arg v as your output Or hold on, I got a message. Okay. Let's see. So for for each language, it's a little bit different. For Python, you will need to import import a library called sys, and from there, it's almost you would have to do like let's see. From there, you would have something like sys dot 
or V as your as your uh, your variable that handles the command line inputs. So this would be like the combination of arg argv and argc. You would have to find the the length of this to get how many arguments are in your command line. And then you'd also need to, and then this also handles what input, what are the actual like inputs on the command line for this. For C and C++, I think this is mainly C++, so my bad if it's not working for C but I'm pretty sure it's the same. So this would right here is your count for how many arguments. Here is the here's the uh, where your where the inputs are are handled here for the command line the, for the command line. So we can just call them the par parameters. I should put command line parameters and the, and these functions will actually handle the stuff on the command line. For Java, I, it's already, it's kind of already in there. So, so the normal main, the main line is like a public static, uh, let's see, it's, I think it's a public void. Isn't it's public static void main? Main. So like a like a typical um, the the typical main function that most Java programmers will know actually the command the command line arguments you need to worry about are actually right here and you can actually grab your arguments from from that parameter for your command line okay and we can go on we can go on to more in-depth questions now or any like Q&A you need for any slide that you want to cover. I could even demo, I can even demo any part that someone might not want to see like started. Make files. Uh, okay, <clears throat> we can, I'll stop the share and then we can just